Hi everyone, my name is Mahati Chopali and today I'm going to be talking to you more about my experiences with the Grace Internship and how I'm going to apply my, my learnings and my knowledge that I gained from this internship um, into, in the future and in a club that I'm going to perform at my school. So my motivation behind joining this internship is basically two reasons, two things. Number one is the fact that this internship was literally my dream internship. I would have killed to have done this. This is an invaluable experience that I would have never passed up on. And number two would be that um, I wanted to like document my experiences and help spread the word about can um, cancer awareness in my community and implement what I learned about the community's needs in order to become the best doctor I can be in the future. So this, these are the main things, the main days and events that I focused on during my presentation. So day one was basically just learning about GCF. Most of the bullet points that I put on here have been covered by the previous presenters. So basically, um, in a nutshell, GCF is an NGO that is here to improve the quality of life for cancer patients and their families through uh, care and support services. And their goal is to reduce the cancer burden in communities through prevention, early detection, treatment, providing materials and funding, research, and etc. And their motto is basically reaching the unreached. Um, I will use, so for implementation about learning about grace is I will use this knowledge that I learned about grace in order to effectively establish a Grace Cancer Foundation club at my school and make sure the club follows the right values and makes the impact that Grace wants to make as an NGO. Um, day two is my, was the research and data organization. Um, so basically what we did was we sat with Dr. Krishnaja and others and we learned how the research worked and we um, learned about um, the, like how the research worked, the different softwares that we use in order to organize the, um, the reports and get diagnoses from doctors. And um, we also, so we basically learned that a research paper is basically comprised of a title, abstract, introduction, a literature review, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and references. And basic, and that when conducting research, the questions that you have, that you are asking these people, especially in rural India, um, make sense to them and they know what they're being asked in order to get accurate results from surveys. And then um, when it comes to like data organization and stuff, when we get the forms that we need from the camps, um, where they have the vitals, the symptoms, and all that, um, they we learned that they put are they are put into a software called Neopat, where they store patient data, and um, they also send these tests that they do in the camps in or to tenant in order to get speedy results and diagnoses from doctors, and which they then put back into Neopat in order for the patient's records to be saved. And basically there's, what I learned from that day was that there are many different components to a research paper and guidelines that need to be followed in order to, um, for it to be effective, successful, and um, get the best results that you can possibly get out of it. And that there are also many online tools used in order to organize patient slash participant data um, in, yeah, in, when in the screening camps. And I can implement this in the future by, um, from, for when I write research papers in the future and um, when 
So like I could offer kids in the clubs like an opportunity to write research papers and I could assist them in doing so with this new knowledge that I've gained. And also I can, I learned to effectively use software tools in order to organize patient participant information. Day three was learning about the different cancers, the different screening methods, and as well as marketing. So basically, uh, we worked mainly with Dr. Christian John and Vinish here to learn about different cancers and the different screening methods as well as different marketing strategies. And basically what we did with Dr. Christian John was um, do a, watch, go over a PowerPoint presentation about um, the different cancers, where they're located, how they're um, obtained, um, and so like the different cancers were breast, cervical, and lung. And we learned the different types of examinations that you could do, and the most important one of them being self-examinations, especially for breast cancer, which is um, the easiest one to do self-examinations for. And um, for marketing, uh, we talked about different marketing strategies, and the um, main idea was to like focus on finding the main audience for your message and target the right people in order to get a better outcome from the marketing and fi finding a way to effectively um, spread the message, um, like the good service message, whatever you want to try to market to someone um, in an effective manner. And what I learned from that day was that cancer screening isn't always available to the public, especially in rural, rural villages. So having awareness about self-examinations and having awareness about the symptoms of cancer can really help um, under can really help um, with the early detections of cancer, which can eventually reduce the numbers of cancer in um, in these communities. And my implementations for this in the future will that I will be using these marketing strategies to make my club more appealing to the people at my school and make them more interested in the cause. And I will spread awareness about the symptoms of cancer and teach people um, how to do their self-examinations in order to early diagnose any abnormalities to prevent extensive treatments. Day four was the Injury Cancer Hospital in the Malboro Farm. Um, so when basically that day we went to the Injury Cancer Hospital in Nizamabad and toured the hospital and we also went to the farms where they were doing something called spiritual farming. Um, so my learning is that um, Indra Cancer Hospital is like in a rural part of India, like in Islamabad, and it helps uh, people within five districts in northern Dalanga, and they offer free care and treatment to the underprivileged. And after um, talking to a few patients, Personally, they all said that Endure was definitely a godsend because many people can't afford hospital care in many ways, such as time, energy, money. So, like, when I say time, it means that, like, it takes a lot of time just to, like, say, go to Yashoda Hospital for cancer treatment, all the way from Nizamabad. But they also have their farms that they need to take care of, and with without t with time being um, wasted just going to, like, say, Yashoda, from Nizamabad, their farms can die and that could also reduce their like income and it's just kind of like a domino effect really for everything that could like everything that's bad that could happen to them. And then when it comes to the Mapale farms, um, it they follow the idea of spiritual farming, which allows the different plants to grow, grow together in harmony and produce good yield. And it was mentioned that a lot of plants there are very good for cancer prevention. And they also, like when it comes to like um, growing together in harmony and stuff, like all the plants, they listen to the plants. They don't use pesticides or anything harmful. They listen to the plants and what they want to do and how they want to grow in order to produce like um, the healthiest possible organic food that you can get. And, um, my findings for this were like that there is a huge demand for cancer hospitals in the rural parts of India, and there are many rural places that do not understand the huge risks of like smoking, chewing tobacco. Because, as I said, when I interviewed the patients, there was a lot of patients that 
um, were farmers and um, daily wage workers that chew tobacco or smoke tobacco on a daily basis, always drink at night, or were like, yeah, or were just like keeping tobacco in their mouths for longer periods of time, especially at night, and they really didn't know um, the effect of tobacco and alcohol on their bodies and how that could be, that how that could make them more susceptible to cancer, and. This level of unawareness made, yeah, so like basically all this um, unawareness in the community just basically made them more susceptible to cancer. And that's why these cancer hospitals are very much needed in these districts. And my implementation, I was, I took a lot from the Indoor Cancer Hospital, but really what I start, wanted to implement was the, my learnings from the farm and especially that um, I can research like such about like these medicinal plants in order to understand determine these different ways of preventing cancer and um, maybe figure out like what is in these plants and what is in these things that they grow in order that are like preventing the cancer in order to help like find more like readily available alternatives all over the world in order for people to have the same effects that this food gives them. And then day five, that was when you show the hospital a bit. And basically um, what we did there was we went to show that we watched surgeries and observed the hospital environment. And I also got to talk to a few doctors that I really wanted to talk to and see a couple of departments that I wanted to see. So basically my learnings from the show the, um, the show the hospital tour was that like, when it comes to performing surgery, like I, I had this question in my brain, like how hard is surgery really? Because we see it on the screens and we're like, oh, it doesn't seem that hard. You just kind of go in, you do your thing, and then you're out, they're healing, it's fine. But really when it comes to surgery, there's a lot of planning and preparation done ahead of time, such as getting the right doses of anesthesia, getting, making sure the patient's comfortable, um, and all those other things. And there's a lot of technology used in the OR to make sure the surgeries are easier and the patient is safe. Um, and along with the planning, there's a lot of organization involved, such as like, they, they I, I observed that they were taking like count of how many gauze pads they use, how many masks, how many scalpels, like, how many times they had to use the saline, like how many milliliters and stuff. And they all, and, and it, I saw that it was also very important that the doctors and patients, uh, that they have like a good relationship and trust with each other in order for the surgery to go like accordingly. And what I learned overall was that surgeries are more difficult than they seem in the movies and on the screens because there's so much more planning and organization going on behind the scenes, and that's not um, what a lot of people see. And another thing that I took away from this is that there's so many doctors and so, and so many patients in this hospital, and the organization in hospitals is key because taking, taking note and record of all of these people and all of these surgeries and procedures, treatments, what they're getting from the pharmacy, and everything requires a lot of attention to detail and a lot of efficiency and the hospital seems to have basically mastered that because it, everything was running so smoothly like i was actually super surprised and my implementations was like what i got out of it was that i understood how the hospital environment works and functions i also understand the hard work and planning that goes into surgery and this experience and like all of my new understanding from this experience will allow me to know what to expect while working in a hospital environment when I'm a future um, health professional. And day six, um, I, this was a Sparch Hospice visit. And basically when I went to the Sparch Hospice, we basically learned about palliative care and how, um, how to deal with patients um, in these institutions. And what I learned was that palliative care is a very hard period with many things you have to be, there are many things that you have to be aware of while dealing with these patients because they're in such a fragile place in their life. 
that you don't, you can like say one small thing that you thought was right, but it, it could like totally mess up the whole patient doctor dynamic. And it could also just ruin the essence of palliative care in general. And um, there are a lot of aspects of palliative care, such as treatment, pain management, um, making sure the patient's family is comfortable, psychological support, mental support, um, physical support because they have physical therapy rooms, and so much more, so much more. And basically what I learned from this, uh, the tour of the palliative care center is that even though the idea of palliative care doesn't seem like too appealing at first because it's where most termini terminally ill individuals go to their last days in peace, it's like very effective because it's, it gives people a peaceful environment to like um, rethink their lives, just like sort of be like, hey, this is what's happening and be able to peacefully spend the last days, with their last days with their family in peace, comfort, and um, with, yeah, just like with love and with their families. And yeah, and they, we also learned like, we, we did the certification, we learned how the ethics works. The ethics were like really, really important to me because one question I had as like, I wanna be a doctor, and one question that I've always had was how do I break the bad news to patients in, a, in an appropriate map, like in an appropriate manner? And the certification class definitely answered that question for me. And they basically say that, that you have to say, um, you, you have to be positive about everything, try to say some, everything in a positive matter. Like for example, instead of saying you don't have that many days left, like you, you're gonna die soon. <laughs> like instead of saying stuff like that, you have to say, unfortunately your time is limited, stuff like that, in order to just make it like easier for the patient to comprehend. So they don't start freaking out and be like, what, I'm like gonna die tomorrow or something? So there's all of that. And then there's also the ethics and, I mean, yeah, the ethics and there was a psychologist there that taught us that it's like, whatever you do for the patient should be for the good of the patient. The intention behind what you do, your actions matters the most when it comes to palliative care because you have to respect so many people's wishes. You have to make sure the patient's comfortable. There's so many things that could be messed up in order to just try to save the patient. But in reality, it's like basically the intention behind your actions that affects the patient. And then day seven, this was the cancer screening in Hamam. And basically we went to a little village called Bunjala and we did a cancer screening camp. Um, that was, this picture is of like, the people under the tent waiting to get screened, filling out forms, getting their blood pressure stuff done. And then um, that's people getting their BP taken. And then that's me with a bunch of school kids and some nurses that I became very good friends with. We exchanged phone numbers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so like all these nurses and children, they were very nice to me and I got to talk to them and I learned that there was a lot of people, like I even got to talk to some of the um, participants and I learned that cancer is a very prevalent thing in their community and especially from like some of these older people here, when I asked them like, what is the Im impact of cancer on your life? Like, have you ever experienced um, losing a loved one or having a loved one like having getting cancer or anything like that and they said a lot of them said that they have experienced um, at least one loved one in, in their lives like getting cancer and dying and they thought it was really they thought it was just something that they couldn't prevent until these cancer screening camps came in so that made me realize how important cancer screening is because if we detect these things early they don't have to tell these types of stories to other people about people um, their loved ones dying of cancer and all of that. And these little kids too, they were telling me about their grandparents, especially this one, her name is Sri Lalita. I remember her very well. She told me that her grandpa died of um, 
oral cancer because it spread like they didn't know what it was they just thought it was an infection and that if it got worse they'd get it checked out but it got worse really really quick and eventually spread it was like um it was um oh my god it was just basically spreading throughout his entire body and eventually just um got him killed and that made me feel really sad and made me realize the importance of early detection in cancer because if we could have detected her grandpa's cancer early he wouldn't have he would have been alive by now. Um, and my implementations from this is that I can take these statements made by the locals in order to determine the rural community's needs, and that will help me understand what is needed in order to help remove the burden of cancer and other diseases in their communities when I become a doctor. And in conclusion, this internship, my experience, it was amazing. And I have made so many friends and so many memories, and I've learned so much from this entire experience. And I just want to say thank you because this was this was amazing, and I don't think I could have learned this anywhere else. Thank you.